you might run into one other scenario for some basic energy problems. So we first looked at Q equals MC delta T, which is where one substance stays the same state of matter the whole time. So like that solid piece of aluminum that's either cool or warm. And we do our MC delta T equation. We've seen MC delta T equals negative MC delta T, where the heat transferred lost by one object gets transferred into another object that then gains that heat. And the third type of basic energy problem that you might see is when uh, your substance changes states of matter while it's absorbing or releasing heat energy. In other words, what if it melts? What if it boils? Um, what if it freezes or condenses where it starts as one state of matter and then a different state of matter. We're gonna look at one more diagram, a phase change diagram to help us figure that out. So with this phase change diagram, you could probably figure out there looking at those particles uh, that, that particles here on this part of the graph where they're tightly packed together there that that's supposed to represent when the object is in its solid state. When the particles look a little more spread out, this guy, during that whole section, it would be a liquid. And up here, this is when it's a gas. So let's look at this and see what would the um, X and Y axes be labeled then. Well, the x-axis is going to be delta Q that we would measure in joules, maybe calories if it was a metric non-metric problem. And then on the y-axis, we're going to put temperature that we usually measure in degrees Celsius. So let's look at the various parts of the graph and we'll see what's going on. So I'm going to call this part in the beginning A, the flat part B, this part C, the next flat part D, and this part all the way at the end E. So if we put in a little bit of heat energy into a solid, you could see right here on this part of the graph on that slope, that if we put in just a smidge of heat energy, the temperature starts to climb. Now on part A, it stays a solid the whole time it's part A. So we're warming up our solid. It's staying the same state of matter the whole time. It's just changing temperatures. So for this problem, you would use MC delta T. The same thing happens if you're in section C of this graph, where it stays one state of matter the whole time. You're just warming up your liquid, right, at this corner of C. It's just a really cold liquid, but by the time you get up to this corner of C, it's a really hot liquid. So we're just warming up our liquid. So we could use the Q equals MC delta T equation again. We would just use the liquid C value instead of the solid C value. And then for E, same deal. It stays a gas the whole time. It's just that the temperature of that gas is changing. So we're warming up the gas. We could use our Q equals MC delta T equation, and we would just use the gaseous form of C. Well, what about those two flat parts, B and D? B and D represent our phase changes that when you're focusing on that section of B. If you're on the left-hand corner of B right here, you're still all solid. But by the time you make it to the right-hand corner of B, you're all liquid. 
That must mean that during B, as you move across from left to right for B there, your substance is melting. So the heat energy does not go into changing the temperature. What the heat energy is doing is pulling the particles apart to change them from solid stage to liquid stage. Kind of picture those um, little particles as being little Lego bricks. And in the solid form, all the Lego bricks are tightly packed together. If you wanted the Lego brick pile to not be all the Lego stuck together, but a little, a few of them broken apart, wouldn't you have to put heat energy, some kind of energy in, to breaking apart those Lego bricks? That's what the energy is doing. The temperature isn't changing, right? This temperature is holding steady the whole time. In fact, what we call that temperature is, I'm kind of running out of room here. Let me kind of move this down a little bit. Um, that temperature is what we call the melting point of a substance. Water melts at zero degrees, right? Or freezes, depending on how you think about it. So if you're warming it up, it would melt at zero. If you're cooling it down, it would freeze at zero. But melting points and boiling points aren't a range of temperatures. It's one temperature. It holds steady the whole time. So we can't use Q equals MC delta T because there is no delta T. Instead, we're going to do mass times heat of fusion. The heat of fusion number on this chart up here, uh, this column right here, tells us how much energy it takes to get one gram of your substance to switch over from solid stage to liquid stage. Now, you'll notice that there is no delta uh, degree C in the unit there because the temperature isn't changing. There is no delta T, so there's nothing about Celsius in that heat of fusion. If we wanted to go from, if we're going along section D here, when you're on the left-hand corner of D, you are all liquid. But by the time you make it across D, you're all gas. And so the temperature that corresponds with D there, if I were to kind of extend this over here, right, that temperature is its boiling point, the temperature at which it goes from liquid to gas. So D is boiling. Again, we can't use MC delta T because there is no delta T we're going to do mass times heat of vaporization.